We're speaking this morning with Professor Virgil of the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, who has published a new book. Would you explain your new book to us and how it came about? Okay. Um, the book's titled The Symmetries of Things. It's about repeating patterns in the plane and on surfaces. So, um, uh, you can see here we've got a little clover leaf that's repeated over the surface of the sphere and also on the plane beneath it. Um, uh, I, it took us 10 years to write it, working with uh, John Horton Conway, who's a professor at Princeton University, and Heim Goodman Strauss, who's at University of Arkansas right now. Um, how it came about, uh, as a graduate student in sometime in the early 90s, I was assigned to be a note taker for one of Conway's lectures. And I fought hard for that assignment, I confess. Um, took the notes, but Conway talks fast and he talks for a long time, so I didn't uh, capture everything he said. So since I was visiting my parents in New Jersey at the time and he was at Princeton, I drove over, met him, and we polished it up and finished off a sort of initial summer, summary of that lecture. Um, fast forward, oh, five or ten years to uh, Chicago where I was, I had just finished a postdoc in Minnesota and was working as a mathematician in, uh, in the University of Illinois Chicago depart math department. And he uh, received an award that let him stay just a little ways north of Chicago for a year. Uh, so while he was the big muckety-muck visiting lecturer there, I went up and proposed to him that uh, we work on a little project. And I had, you know, symmetry for dummies or something as, as an idea. You know, a little 100-page pamphlet with a bright yellow cover. And uh, so we got started on that. We wrote the first four chapters, and it looked pretty good. Well, except for the illustrations. But I'd also been talking to Heim Goodman Strauss, about one of these little pamphlets and I figured let's just combine the whole project and Haim is a brilliant artist as well as a brilliant mathematician uh, so he just got to work he actually developed an entire software package to illustrate this book um, and you know did all the other illustrations also and so the, now the book is absolutely gorgeous uh, John Conway could not stop at four chapters so every time we met there was another chapter to add um, that's part of what took the whole 10 years. And then, of course, with Conway on the project, we had no trouble finding a publisher. And, um, and now it's finally done. Uh -huh. When did it come out? Uh, it came out in May, I think. Uh -huh. Where will it be used? How will it be used? Uh, I think it's primarily useful as a reference. You know, there's a lot of stuff published in here that either has never been seen before or was only in mathematical papers, in journal articles. So you had to go search a library for each of these little details. This collects it all in one volume. Um, so it, it should be very valuable for mathematicians wanting to learn about symmetry. Uh, my initial vision was that it could be used by high school teachers. Uh, and I've tried to write the first third of the book to be very accessible so that you can find things in there that you could take out and use in a high school class. Um, it's not particularly useful as a college textbook because you'd have to make up all of your own exercises and exams. We don't have supporting homework or test banks or anything like that. Um, but you could use it to teach a graduate class in mathematics if you were clever about making up problems. Um, and Heim's vision is that he wants to get this into the hands of the design community so that when you look at wallpaper paper patterns, you can see more than just one or two symmetries repeated over and over on all the walls. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of patterns they could be using that they aren't exploiting because I don't know if it's their machinery or they just don't know that there are all these other options out there. Uh -huh. How would you explain symmetry to a layman? Oh, well, I've got a definition that I use, which is um, each little, I've got a little thing here. So each little point of this star looks the same as each other little point. So there's, you could sort of think of taking this point of the star and moving it over to where that point was. Um, that's not enough, though, because you can make, you know, tile a brick walk with the bricks all askew, and each brick looks just like each other brick, right. but there's no overall symmetry. Yeah. Um, so also, the area around this point of the star has to be the same as the area around this point of the star. So there's some repeated object, and its environment is the same as the environment of the other objects that match it. Uh -huh. 
is this a field that you perhaps will do further work in, do you think? Well, there's a lot of work's been done, and I plan to actually, Conway and I are talking about a paper on tessellations now. Um, what does that mean? Tessellations? Well, that's like your brick walk. I see. Um, you take pieces and assemble them to make a, a whole. Yeah, yeah. That's a sort of general definition. When did you first become interested in this particular aspect of mathematics? Well, my junior year of high school, sophomore year of high school, somewhere around then, I went to a summer camp on four-dimensional mathematical stuff, um, and I saw Tom Banshoff's video of the hypercube, and we talked about four-dimensional regular polyhedra. I came back to high school my senior year, tried to present this material to my high school math class. That was not hugely successful. Um, but that's where I first started looking at objects like this, yeah. polytopes. Uh, and the, the symmetry is just a natural outgrowth because the polytopes that are most beautiful to me are yeah. the ones with the most symmetry. Yeah. So one thing led to another, and here I am. And it's a combination, it sounds to me, as if it's a combination of high-level mathematics and art. I'm not an artist, yeah. but um, definitely a combination of high-level math high level mathematics and beauty. Yeah. Heim is an artist. You can look in the book. You can see art. Yeah. But when I make something like this, the beauty comes from the, mathematic the yeah. mathematics, not from me. Yeah. Is there a field of mathematics that you uh, have not yet explored that you'd like to have the opportunity to do? I was just talking to someone about taking a quantum physics course, but that's not math. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to read more about a lot of things in math. Yeah. But I wouldn't say there's a field that I'm dying to discover right. because that's what graduate school is for. That's right. And you've spent a lot of time in this particular field. Well, off and on, yeah. 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 Is, is geometry part of the overall umbrella for this type of research? Yeah, um, yeah I would say geometry. I think geometry means the measurements of things. Yeah. Um, so anytime you have a thing to measure, yeah. it's, it's geometry. I include graphing, graphing equations as geometry, though. Yeah. And you do this professionally and personally as well. This is a hobby as well as a, as a, as a, as a, as a job. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you've always been interested in this kind of mathematics? Well, I didn't know it existed before my junior year of high school. So. Uh -huh. And that was your introduction? To polytopes, yeah. yeah. Well, there were Dungeons and Dragons dice, right? Yeah. yeah. You look at this, you think, oh, if I roll that, what side will come up? Um, so that might have been my introduction. But I didn't see it as math uh -huh. until high school. Do you come from a family of mathematicians? No. My father has a degrees in, I think, physics and electrical engineering. Uh -huh. And my mother was a writer. So. Wow. Wow. And this is kind of a combination. This book is a combination of writing and, uh, and certainly high-level yeah. mathematics. Yeah. But credit where credit is due, Conway is a much better writer than I am. I, I was shocked to discover it. I thought that would be my contribution to yeah, the book. Yeah. But you know, he's, a, he's got a huge mathematical brain, and he's an excellent writer. An amazing man. Last question. You uh -huh. mentioned the first three chapters of the book uh -huh. were primarily yours. What aspects of mathematics does that look into, those first three chapters? Um, so the book sort of gets more abstract and difficult as you go yeah, through it. Yeah. So the first few chapters you start out with, um, you know, here's, here's a pattern you might make with a spirograph. Yeah. And let's look at that and identify the symmetries in it. Yes. Okay, now here's something you might see on a wall yeah. or on the floor, right? A, a, a tiling yeah. or a decorative pattern. Um, and let's look at those and see the symmetries. Okay, now here's, you know, a ball-shaped thing. Let's look at the symmetries in that. Uh, and that's, so that's how it begins is very concrete pictures and examples and how do you analyze them. And then we start going into, okay, well, what's possible? What different symmetries are possible? Um, and then we get into why are those possible? And, and I think we wrap that up pretty nicely. And then we go into, and what else can you do? And that gets very large and open-ended very quickly. Well, thank you very much for this uh, introduction mm -hmm. to what mm -hmm. looks like a gorgeous book. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. It is. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.